Whoa there! Hitch up your horse by the trough and clean the mud off your boots, cause it's time for another rootin' tootin' episode of Little Miss Kate, Ward of the State. We open today's flight of fancy on the wild backcountry roads of upstate New York, as Lil Miss Kate, Deputy Mayor and Personal Guardian Solomon Russell, former heavyweight champion of the world and personal tutor Lucinda Sheraton, and sophisticated stallion and personal chauffeur Fiorello, head to Niagara Falls in their newly won jalopy. Is it finally time for Lil Miss Kate to meet her Lil Miss parents? Only our Lord Jesus Christ knows for sure. But first, Say, kids, isn't it great when mom and dad give you five shillings and a loony every Sunday for your allowance? I know old Joe down at the candy stand thinks so. But what if your parents aren't as morally upright as they could be and don't make enough money to pass along some spare change? Well, after you tell those hippies who birthed you to get a job, come on down to Fourth National Bank and get one of our new Loans for Littles. With these high interest loans, you'll get candy in your tummy today and worry about all that money business later. Fourth National Bank. We're a bank. Trust us. And now we take you to the scene of the crime. The crime of adventure. It's Lil Miss Kate, ward of the state. You're right, Fiorello. This jalopy does handle like a dream. It's sure swell that it's in our grubby little paws instead of the cold, dead hands of those lakeside high teenagers. Catherine, stop distracting Fiorello. He needs to keep his full horse concentration on the road while driving us through these spooky upstate New York woods. Sorry, former heavyweight champion of the world and personal tutor Lucinda Sheraton. I'm just... So excited! After several exciting and perilous adventures, we're finally on our way to find my parents in Niagara Falls! Aren't you excited, Deputy Mayor of New York City, Solomon Russell? <laughs> I'll be excited once I'm safe and home in my palatial city hall apartment with my beautiful fiancé, Upper West Side ingenue Patricia Rosenstein. And me, Lil Miss Kate, Ward of the State. Established. <laughs> Where the heck are we anyway? These eerie elms and oogie-boogie oaks look nothing like the perfectly planned orchards of Gramercy Park. Hmm. This old two-lane highway is a tad spooky. But I'm sure my girlish pluck and gumption will guide us through no matter what comes our way. the humanity! The gang's jalopy flies right off an unseen cliff straight into the valley below. Did anyone yell, Timber? Flung from the passenger seat in the commotion, we catch up with Lil Miss Kate as she wakes in a dark and mysterious cave. What a commotion! Good thing you're such a steady hand behind the wheel, Fiorello. Fiorello? Where is that handsome stallion? Fiorello? Come on! This wasn't funny during the nor'easter of 32, and it ain't funny now! Fiorello! 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 Hmm. Wonder if that other annoying little girl is having any luck finding Fiorello. Or if any of my other frequent acquaintances... Uh, maybe they're all further in this cave. You read my mind. Too. Anyone got a light? Yeah, here you go. That's much better. Now I can see. Hey, where'd everybody go? They can't hear you, little Mistress Catherine. Huh? Uh? What? Little Miss Kate whips around counterclockwise to find a pale, monstrous mistress of horror dressed in all black, seated atop an ancient altar. Terracotta pottery litters the ground, cracked beneath the mysterious woman's heel in full defiance of traditional Christian values. It is I, Persephone. I know you, you're Persephone, goddess of the underworld. Close enough. The real question, who are you, Little Miss Kate, ward of the state? Whoa. Someone turn off the dark! Enough of this white rabbit tomfoolery. You must prepare yourself if you wish to leave this place. Then it's true. I'm in the underworld. Pluto's gut! All right, goddess, I'll play your games. Nothing's gonna keep me from finding my parents. 
there will be three challenges, one of strength, one of mind, and one of heart. Complete all three and you will return to your friends in the world above. Who? Oh, right, those guys I ride around in the car with. Hmm, I wish I could remember their names. Yes, the longer you remain in the underworld, the more you will forget your time amongst the living. Nah, I can never remember their names. I usually need them to say their full name and occupation once every 15 minutes or so. It's just part of my charm. Enough! The first challenge will commence. A test of strength. Flames fill Persephone's doom and gloomatorium, so bright that little Miss Kate must shut her extremely large puppy dog eyes. When the heat finally dies down, our deceased damsel finds herself standing in the middle of a majestic coliseum. All the demonic forces of the underworld let out a mighty roar as they feast upon their Cracker Jack and Pepsi in the bleachers. Gee whiz, I haven't seen an arena like this since Berlin 1936! If you can't beat this challenge, you won't be around to see London 1948. Now to claim victory, you must survive the combined might of the Neiman Lion, the Lernian Hydra, the Cernian Hind, the Ermanthian Boar, the Stamalian Birds, the Cretan Bull, the Mares of Diomedes, the Cattle of the Three-Bodied Giant Heron, Serbius, Hippolyta, Queen of the Amazons, And finally, the Argan Stables. <laughs> Maltese matchbooks! A menagerie of mythical monsters! Yes, all the most famous dead creatures from the 100-page Greek myth compendium placemat from Uncle Nick's Diner located at 48th and 6th. If you enter that meat grinder and survive, you may have a chance to return to the world above. After completing two more challenges, of course. Well, little Miss Kate, looks like you found yourself in another brain-ripping death match for Valhalla! <laughs> ah! Wow, they all killed each other. I just stood here in the back. What a mess. Catherine of New York! You have completed the first challenge, and it was remarkably exciting as well. I can't believe my eyes. Try trusting your ears! On to challenge number two, the second of three challenges. You're really into your challenges. There's three established did. The satanic flames engulf Kate and Persephone. Eyes once again wide shut, the Orpheusian orphan reaches for some semblance of sanity, only to find her perfectly pedicured hand petting the paw of some prodigious pet. Gee whiz, I haven't seen a creature like this since Berlin 1936. If you can't answer the Sphinx's riddle, you won't be around to see London 1948. This is the challenge of the mind, by the way. I'm really proud of it. Taking pride in your work is the cornerstone of any small business. Now stand before the Sphinx and receive your destiny. Oh, great Sphinx! I stand before you unarmed and unafraid. My right hand is open in friendship and my left is closed in strength. Entreat unto me your question that I may answer truthfully and without sin. I welcome thee, little Miss Kate, ward of the state. Riddle me this. What can point in every direction but can't reach the destination itself? Little Miss Kate racks every wrinkle of her cornered mind for the answer to the Sphinx conundrum. Kate thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks. What can point in every direction but can't reach the destination itself? That was it, right? Yes, okay. Uh, Kate continues to think and think and think. She confidently steps forward and thinks some more. She thinks and thinks and thinks. What can point in every direction but can't reach the destination? I know the answer! It's Deputy Mayor Solomon Russell. As Deputy Mayor, he holds no real political power. Heck, I've seen him point and yell at the mailman on trash day and the trash man on mail day. 
Suddenly, the mythological marvel explodes as little Miss Kate guesses the correct answer to their rigorous riddle. Kate wipes the mass of fur and internal organs off her face as she turns to face the Queen of the Dead. That's two of your trials I've completed, Persephone! I'm busting my way out of here just like Joe DiMaggio! Bust those dingers into left field for the New York Yankees, the only baseball team in New York City now and forever and more! Yes, little Miss Kate, you have triumphed over the test of strength, and you have conquered the test of mind. But how will you overcome the test of heart? Please, everyone on the schoolyard knows that my heart is cold as ice. Then begin the challenge. Another round of wonderful coal-powered flames fill the chamber. Our pipsqueak princess rubs the soot out of her eyes to discover two silhouettes standing before her. One has a large hat, the other large shoes. Both feel strangely familiar. In fact, they look just like... My long-lost parents! I haven't seen them since Berlin 1936! That's... Right. At that completely normal and calm Olympics, I can return your long-missing mother and father to you. The three of you can go along your way and live in peace and harmony. Maybe even intend London 1948. But to always gain is to always lose. If you choose to be reunited, you will never see your new friends again. Deputy Mayor Solomon Russell, former heavyweight champion of the world Lucinda Sheraton, Horse Fiorello, all will be lost to the sands of time. Yeah, sure, whatever. What? Take those guys. I'd rather just have my parents back. It's sort of my deal, you know? But no one ever takes the parents. This challenge is a layup. Everyone always chooses the friends. Who are you talking about? Wow, your spell must have worked! All my memories of Solomon Russell, Lucinda Sheridan, and Fiorello have vanished! I didn't do anything. Mumsy! Papacy! It's me! Katesy! Word of the Statesy! Enough! You have failed the test of the heart, and you have proven yourself unworthy of returning to the world above. My parents! They're d disappearing! Oh, those weren't your parents. They were just latex-based criminal and Solomon Russell's fiancé. <gasps> Am I to join those guys who we're definitely never going to see ever, ever again, never, not even in episode nine, toiling away in the bone mines of Tartarus for all eternity? No, I curse you with an even worse fate, eternal life. You, little Miss Kate, will have adventures for decades to come, forced to risk your life and sell ancillary products for all of eternity. Now, go. Little Miss Kate cries out as she is sent flying into the chilly black abyss, her mortal soul unable to rest in the Lord Jesus Christ's fishy, bready bosom. As she wanders the negative zone fields of nothingness, she hears something in the distance. I hear something in the distance, but what can it be? I'm all alone here. No one to help my little gumdrop face and dry my little button nose and wipe away the tears on my little nutcracker eyes. Wait, it's getting clearer. It sounds like the frantic babbling of a man speaking to his fiance, And the sound of spells being cast, learned from the secret city of Columbus, Ohio. And a horse whinnying. It must be those guys I drive around with in that car. Solomon, whoever, Luciminda, Frank the Pony, I'm here, help me, please. What the, where am I? Good job, listeners! As all faithful members of Club Kate know, the death of your favorite tyrannical tyke can only be prevented by clapping vigorously at your radio! Now go put your hands in the icebox! You deserve it! <laughs> Little Miss Kate blinks her eyes as they adjust to the blinding concrete walls of Mount St. Hospital's emergency room. Her faithful companions sit beside the bed, overjoyed at her quick recovery. Oh, Fiorello! Oh, Lucinda! Oh, Deputy Mayor Solomon, whoever! You wouldn't believe what happened to me! I was in the underworld, and I saw my parents, and I beat Persephone, and- Now, now, Catherine! You gave us quite a scare! You're safe and sound now. But wait! The crash! 
How did you all survive? <laughs> well, me, Lucinda, and Fiorello encountered Osiris, Hela, and the Jersey Devil, respectively. After a series of challenges, we all chose to return to our friends. I respect your choices. Anyway, I've learned something today. Your parents may give birth to you, but your true family is your friends. And that's some of you. Does that mean that we can call off this crazy search and head back to New York City for my matinee of Finian's Rainbow? No, we redouble our efforts, find my parents in Niagara Falls, and finally I can rub it in their dumb parental faces what a better family I've found. <laughs> I agree, Fiorello. Group hug! And so, Lil' Miss Kate beats the Reaper again! Will she ever get her chance to mock her long-lost parents? Don't ask me, I'm just the narrator! Tune in next time for another exciting Lil' Miss Kate adventure as she meets the Bongateer! Coming up next, the cast of Dragnet performs Shakespeare's lost masterpiece, Hamlet! Coming up right after three hours of farm information. Dust. Lil Miss Kate, Ward of the State, is written and created by Seth Finkelstein and Teddy Dinner, mixed and produced by Liam Sr., featuring the vocal talents of Lizzie Fury, Josh Nasser, Anna Rock, Rebecca Acevedo, Seth Finkelstein, and Teddy Dinner. Our artwork is by Roxy V. You can find her work at, at Big Huge Frog. Like what you hear? Leave us a tip at ko-fi.com slash Kate. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the show on the podcatcher of your choice. Thanks so much for listening.